All right, if you would open your Bibles to Acts chapter 13, Acts and chapter number 13, when you find your place in Acts chapter 13 and verse number 1, I invite you to stand as we honor God with a reading of his word, Acts chapter 13 and verse number 1. Verse number 1. Now there were in the church that was at Antioch certain prophets and teachers, as Barnabas and Simeon, and, uh, that was called Niger and Lucius of Cyrene, and Manian, which uh, has been brought up with Herod the Tetrarch and Saul, as they ministered to the Lord and, fa and fasted, the Holy Ghost said, Separate me, Barnabas and Saul, for the work whereunto I have called them. And when they had fasted and prayed, they laid their hands on them, and they sent them away. So they, being sent forth by the Holy Ghost, departed unto Seleucia, and from thence they sailed to Cyprus. Uh, let's pray. Father, as we are to the teaching and preaching part of the service, Father, once again, I ask that you would empty me of myself, Father, that you cleanse me of my sin, and that you would fill me with thine Holy Spirit, that I may preach thus saith the word of the Lord. Father, as we discuss these verses and other verses in the Bible this morning, Lord, I ask that you'd help us to stay focused, that you would help us to be engaged, Lord, that the Holy Spirit would be free to work in the hearts and the minds of everyone here, Lord, and that we would not give any space to the devil, that he would not be able to buy for any time through uh, the phone and social media or emails or text messages, Lord, that we would be able to focus on the message of your word this morning. Lord, if there's someone here, Lord, if they're not sure that if they were to die today, that heaven would be their home, Father, I ask this morning that you would help them understand and know that they have a need for salvation through Christ or to have everlasting life. Or that they would make that decision this morning to place their faith and their trust in you, in Jesus and what he has done on the cross for them. Lord, thank you for this day. I ask that you would have your will and your way in the rest of the service, for it is in Christ's name I pray. Amen. Thank you. you. May be seated. May God bless the reading of his message. The Lord's will. The Lord's will. You may ask yourself this question, and maybe you might have asked yourself this, or maybe you've asked others, does the Lord have a specific will for me? Does the Lord have a specific will for me? And you're going to see this morning in not only these four verses, but there's other places in the Bible. We're going to go to the John and also further into Acts chapter 16, where you're going to see that the Lord has a specific will for all of his followers. Because, listen, the Lord does not have some generic will to where we're, we're just here and then sometimes the Lord calls this person or that person to do something more specific. No, listen, the Lord has a specific will for each individual that has trusted Christ as his Savior and who is following him. He has a specific will in his ministry. And it behooves us to find out his will. And I want to tell you this. He does reveal that specific will for you. He does reveal that specific will for me. He has revealed that will for me. I'm going to give you just a short testimony. A lot of you have heard this before and probably heard it many times. But when I was the, uh, the associate here, uh, I was look at, at the end of the, the it was about a, 
uh, right before God called me to be the pastor here, I was candidating at another church. My wife and I were going there, and we were preaching there, and we uh, we were kind of candidating there. Didn't I wasn't real sure if it was the Lord's will for us to go there, so I was going there and preaching and getting to know the people there, and and. One Sunday afternoon, as I was preaching there on a Sunday morning, because they didn't have a pastor there, and I wasn't going there every week. I was just going there uh, every so often. And they, uh, right after the Sunday morning service, they went in and they said, "Stay right here before, before we go out to eat. We're gonna we have a meeting." And they went and met, and in that meeting, they voted whether to call me as their pastor or not. And uh, one couple voted nay there, and. The church was not, did not call me to be the pastor there. But as when we came home, as I was coming over here for the evening service, as we came back, as it was only a few hours away, uh, Jim, Brother Jim told me that he was retiring as a pastor. God has a specific plan. He said no there because he had me a, plan, a specific plan here. God has a specific, listen, uh, God has a specific plan for every single one that follows him. Listen, even if you don't follow him, maybe you're saved this morning and you're serving yourself. God still has a specific plan for you, for your life. And listen, he wants to reveal that plan for you because, listen, I want to tell you this, his plan for your life is better than your plan for your life. You may say, well, I don't know about that. I know what I liked, and I, I know what I disliked. Yes, but you will never have the joy that the Lord has for you while serving yourself and not serving him. And so let's look at the Lord's will this morning and, and how we find out Lord, the Lord's will, his specific will for us. Um, turn to John, or, or John chapter 21 real quick. John chapter 21, turn back to John 21. It's not very far back, it's the very next book back. John chapter 21. Look at verse number 15. Jesus and Peter have a conversation here. Verse 15, let's read. So when they had dined, Jesus saith to Simon Peter, Simon, son of Jonas, lovest thou me more than these? He saith unto him, Yea, Lord, thou knowest that I love thee. He saith unto him, Feed my lambs. He then saith to him again, the second time, Simon, son of Jonas, lovest thou me? Here Peter says unto him, Yes, Lord, yea, Lord, Thou knowest I, that I love thee. He saith unto him, Feed my sheep. He saith unto him the third time, Simon, son of Jonas, Lovest thou me? Peter was grieved, because he said unto him the third time, Lovest thou me? And he said unto him, Lord, thou knowest all things. Thou knowest that I love thee. Jesus saith unto him, Feed my sheep. Verily, verily, I say unto thee, when thou wast young, thou girdest thyself, and walkest whither thou wouldest. But when thou shalt be old, thou shalt stretch forth thine hand, and another shall gird thee, and carry thee. Look at this. Whether thou wouldest... What's that next word? Not. This spake he, signifying by what death he should glorify God. And when he had spoken this, he saith unto him, Follow me. Then Peter turning... About seeth the disciple whom Jesus loved, following that would be John, right? Which also leaned on his breast at supper and said, Lord, which, uh, which is he that betrayeth thee? Peter, seeing him, uh, seeing him, saith to Jesus, Lord, and what shall this man do? Jesus saith unto him, If I will that he tarry till, he come, till I come, What is that to thee? Follow thou me. So the first thing we see here in John chapter 21 is Jesus has a plan for Peter. Remember they were out there fishing and Jesus was out there fixing 
uh, cooking, had a fire there, and they came back to him, and they, we, they, Peter and Jesus has this conversation with the disciples all around them. And, Peter, and Jesus begins questioning Peter. Three times Jesus asked Peter, do you love me? And three times, what did Peter say? Yes, I do love you. First time Jesus says, feed my lambs, feed my sheep, feed my sheep. And then Peter, he doesn't know what's going on, why Jesus is asking him this. And so Jesus is trying to show Peter, I have a plan for you. And it wasn't until Peter looks over at John, then looks at Jesus and says, okay, you want me to feed your sheep. What's he going to do? What's he going to do, Lord? And, and Jesus says, basically in today's language, it ain't none of your business what I have for him. That's what he says. It ain't no business of yours what my plan for him is. You just need to follow me. He goes, when you were young, you could go wherever you wanted. But when you get older, you're going to have to have somebody lead you, and you're going to go, listen, listen to me now, you're going to go where you don't want to go. Jesus has a specific plan for Peter, and he's telling Peter, don't worry about what your brother over here, John, is going to do. You need to focus on me, follow me, do what I'm telling you to do, because I have a specific plan for you. Follow me. So we see here, Jesus has a specific plan for Peter. Turn to Acts chapter 16 real quick. Move over to Acts chapter 16. Not far from where we are this morning. Acts chapter 16. And look at uh, verse number 1. Acts chapter 16 and verse number 1. Then came he to Derbe and Lystra. And behold, a certain disciple was there named Timothy. Timoth Timoth Timotheus, right? The son of a certain woman, which was a Jewish and believed, but his father was a Greek, which was well reported of by the brethren that were in Lystra and Iconium. Him would Paul have to go forth with him, and took and circumcised him because of the Jews which were in the quarters, for they knew all that his father was Greek. And as they went through the cities, they delivered them the decrees for the for to keep uh, that were ordained of the apostles and elders which were in Jerusalem, and so were the churches established in the faith and increased in number daily. Now, when Paul, when they had gone through out Phygia and the region of Galatia, and were forbidden of the Holy Ghost to preach the word in Asia, <coughs> Asia, after they were come to. Uh, Mysia, they assayed and go into Bithynia, but the Spirit suffered them not. And as they, passing by Mysia, came down to Troas, and a vision appeared to Paul in the night. There stood a man of Macedonia and prayed him, saying, Come over to, into Macedonia and help us. And after he had seen the vision, immediately he endeavored to go into Macedonia, assuredly gathering that the Lord had called us to preach the gospel unto them. So here we have Paul. We have Paul in chapter 16. We, and we know in chapter 13 where we read where the Lord is calling uh, Paul and Barnabas. So here in chapter 16, Paul, uh, God directs Paul and Timothy. So as Paul is doing what he's not supposed to be doing, serving the Lord, there's this guy named Timothy who's faithful to the Lord and serving the Lord and also is studying, his, studying the word of what he has. And Paul comes to him and with the ministry and says, I want you to go with me. 
And let me ask you, what did, what did Timothy do? He went. He went. A leader of the church came to him and said, I want you to go with me and be a part of this ministry. And Timothy went. And so Paul went and got Timothy ready. He wasn't a Jew, so he wasn't circumcised, right? And so, and the only reason Paul circumcised him was because of the ministry. Because of the people he was going to be ministering to. Paul was getting him ready. You hear me? Paul was getting Timothy ready for this ministry. God always enables you to do the ministry that he's calling you to. So Paul gets Timothy ready, and they head out. And as he's going through these cities, preaching, and he wants to go to Asia. He has the evident, Paul has his desire to go and preach the gospel in Asia. Well, what happens? God says no. The Holy Spirit says no. Now, we have no idea what transpired there that Paul came to the conclusion that the Holy Spirit does not want, to come, want us to go, whether the, the Lord spoke to him directly or some circumstances has happened where he sees that, well, it's not the Lord's will that we go here. And so he tries to go to another place, and the Lord forbid him there. And as he's going and do, as he's doing what he's supposed to do, serving the Lord, right? As he's serving the Lord and doing what he's supposed to do, he has a vision of a man from Macedonia telling him, Come, help us. And so it went, after the vision, Paul comes to himself, The Lord wants us to go to Macedonia to preach the gospel there. See, Paul wanted to go to Asia. But the Lord had a specific plan for him to go where? Macedonia. See, the Lord had a specific plan for Peter. The Lord has a, had a specific plan for Paul. And he still, listen, he still has a specific plan for you and for me. Now let's go back to chapter 13 where God is getting ready for the specific plan of Paul. And in Acts chapter 13, turn back there just a, a few chapters over, back to verse number 1, and look, what it, I want you to notice what verse number 1 says. Now there were in the church that was at Antioch certain prophets and teachers as, as Barnabas, and Simeon, that was called Niger, and Lucius of Cyrene, and uh, uh, Manian, which had been brought up with Herod the Tetrarch, and Saul. Where were they? In church, right? In the church there, Luke records for us these men. Verse number 2, And as they ministered to the Lord and fasted, the Holy Ghost said, Separate me, Barnabas and Saul, what? For the work... Whereunto I have called them. At, listen, they were in the church and they were, what were they doing? It says they were ministering unto the Lord. What, were, what does that mean? They were serving the Lord there. They were fasting, they were praying, they were busy doing what the Lord was to have them to do. They were doing what they knew they were supposed to do. And it, while they were doing what they knew they were supposed to do, what the Word of God has revealed for them to do, the Holy Spirit, the Lord, called them out for a specific plan. Listen, not only did they, the Lord have a specific plan for Paul and Barnabas, but listen, he also had a plan for all those other guys. Hello? Hello? God had a plan for them. But we see here that God separated Saul, which is Paul, and Barnabas for a specific reason. And when they called them out, when the Holy Spirit called them out, what did the church do? How did the church respond? Verse number 3, And when they had fasted and prayed and laid their hands on them, they sent them away. So as soon as... Soon as 
Saul and Barnabas knew that they were supposed to go and serve the Lord as missionaries, as evangelists, as preachers. The church came together and they fasted. It says they fasted, right? What were they doing? Making sure this was what they were supposed to do. Because remember, Paul wasn't just sitting in a chair, coming once a week. Hello? He wasn't just sitting in the chair. No, Paul was a participant. And the church recognized that God had called Paul and Barnabas. And it says they laid their hands on them, they commissioned them, that means to be sent out, and sent them away. So we see that not only in Acts chapter 16 that God had a, that the Lord had a specific plan for Paul to go to Macedonia, but look at he had a specific plan for Paul and Barnabas. And the question that we I want to ask you this morning that I ask myself is this, does God have a specific plan for me? Does God have a specific plan for you? And according to the authority of the Word of God that we read, yes, He does. He does have a specific plan. And we can go to every single person that we have in the Bible and show that God had a specific plan for him, for that person. And if God does have a specific plan for me in you, the next question is this. Am I serving the Lord and doing what I know I'm supposed to do? Am I serving the Lord and doing what, am I, what I know I'm supposed to do? Well, you might be saying, well, I don't know what I'm supposed to be doing. Well, Jesus did give you a, an, an order before he went up, didn't he? What was, what was the order? The church was to go out and share the gospel with others, right? What we call the Great Commission. Going out and sharing the gospel, witnessing to others, and also discipling. Are you doing that? Are you serving the Lord and being a witness for him? Are you doing that? Because that's God's orders. That's Jesus' orders for us as believers. Listen, I don't want to, he's not going to reveal a specific plan for you if you're not serving him already. Amen. He's not going to reveal a specific plan for you if you're just taking up 18 inches of chair and not being a participant in the ministry. If you're just coming and you're saying, bless me with the message, speak to me, preacher, speak to me, Sunday school teacher, speak to me and, and, and help me, but yet you're not, become, not being a participant in the ministry, coming alongside your other church members, helping them and sharing the gospel in the ministry, God is not going to share with you a specific plan. Because every instance we see in this, they were, what, what were they doing? Serving the Lord when God called them out. God does have a specific plan for you as an individual, for you as a family, as a husband and wife. He has a specific plan. And are you doing what you know you're supposed to do? So he can reveal that specific plan. And the question then comes, is this will, listen, this is important, will you be content with that plan? Will you be content? There are a lot of Christians out there, believers out there, that are not content with God's plan. They want to do more and be more than what God has planned them to be. And you see them. They are spinning wheels with no fruit. They're all kinds of busy. But not only are they busy, but their lives are wreck. 
Their family's in chaos, all kinds of problems going on. They're spinning wheels and there is no fruit from the tree. And then you have others. Listen to me, you have others that place limits on God's will. What do you mean? You, you mean you mean to tell me, Brother Mark, that somebody would actually put limits on God's will? Yes, they will. They will say, Lord, I will do this, but I won't do that. Lord, I will serve you in church, but listen, I'm not going to Africa. I'm not going to the Middle East. Listen, I'm not listen, I'm not gonna go and help that church down there to start that needs some help starting that pastor over there, that preacher over there that needs some help starting a church. No, no, no. I will stay where I'm at, Lord. You can use me where I'm at, but I listen, I'm not doing that. That is someone who is not content with what the Lord has for them, a, his specific plan for them, who has placed limits on God's will. If you're going to place limits on God's will, how do you expect him to reveal his will for you? If you're going to have limits, Lord, I won't do this, but I won't do that. How do you, how do you expect, expect the blessings and the joy from serving the Lord if you're going to place limits on him? You know, James tells us this. James uh, chapter number 4, verse 14 and 15. James says this, Whereas ye know not what shall be on the morrow, for what is your life? It is even a vapor that appeareth for a little time, and then vanisheth away. For that ye ought to say, If the Lord will, we shall live and do this or that. He said, listen, you cannot place limits on the Lord's will. You, you can't make plans without the Lord. He goes, you can say you're going to go and do this, but what if he says no? Or what if he wants you to do this and you say no? James says, what you ought to do is, if this is the Lord's will, we're going to go do it. Yes, God does have a specific plan. I think we've established from the word of God that he does have a will for you, a specific will. And the question is this, will you be content and follow him like he told Peter to do, or will you place limits and not be content? Paul said... In Philippians chapter 4, that he is content with whatever the Lord has for him. I myself have had to come to that conclusion. That I must be content with the Lord's will for my life. And for my family, my wife. My wife. And having a conversation after we lost our baby, the doctor is a Buddhist, lost, don't, doesn't know the Lord. And she had a conversation with the doctor and said, you know, even if the Lord never allows me to have a baby full term and to have a child, I will be happy with whatever he has for us. That's being content with the Lord's will. I myself, I, I've told my wife this, even if the Lord says no, we will continue to do what we know we're supposed to do until he reveals something more else that is spe more specific. Be content with the Lord's will. So are you doing what the Lord wants you to do? Are you doing what you know you're supposed to be doing so he can reveal his will, specific will? And will you be content with it? Number two, the second thing is, here in closing is this. Yes, God does have a specific plan for your life, but you're not going to find out if you're not actively worshiping and serving the Lord daily through the church. In God's specific will for you, he will gift you and enable you to execute 
that plan. You say, well, listen, I feel the Lord is calling to me to do this, but I don't know if I can. If, he, if he's calling you, he will equip you. Moses couldn't speak, right? Or says, uh, your brother here, you, listen, Aaron, he's going to do it for you. If you can't do something, you think you can't, God will enable you to do it. But in order for him to reveal his will for you, you, need to be, you, you must be serving him actively and worshiping him actively in the church now. If you don't know God's plan for you, if you don't know God, God's specific will for you, then maybe, maybe you need to change your priorities. Just maybe you need to change your priorities from serving yourself to serving the Lord. Hard to listen to God when you're serving yourself. He can be speaking to you as clear as day, but you can't recognize that voice, his voice, because you are so focused on serving yourself, doing what you want to do, how you want to do it, when you want to do it. And you've placed limits on him that could be the reason why you don't know his specific will because you're too busy serving yourself. Your God is your belly. Now, I'm not saying that because you're chubby. No, what I'm saying is that your God is yourself. Your God is yourself. You have no intentions. You have no intentions in surrendering your will and your way unto him. But if you will, confess this sin to the Lord and rearrange your priorities, put him first, serving him first, then eventually he will reveal his specific will for your, for your life. Well, you say, well, Brother Mark, I, I'm, listen, I, my young days are over. I'm older. Let me help you out. He still has a specific will for you. He still has a specific will for you. You may not be able to go be that missionary. You may not be able to go out and do a lot of things that you might have could have done when you were younger. But God still has a specific will for you. And your service unto him through the through the local church. It could be serving him in the church, one, by encouraging your brethren. Being an encourager. Being that prayer warrior. Actively praying, actively encouraging the family of God. It could be picking up a phone. Being that, heading up a prayer chain. Having a group of people you know who will pray and, and having these, knowing these things that people are in need of, you can share with those needs with others and you can have that prayer chain. Just because you're not young anymore does not mean that God does not have a specific will for you. He still has a will for you. But in order for him to reveal that will for to you, you first got to be active. Serving and worshiping. Paul, Barnabas, they were there in the church there in Iconium. Or not in Iconium, but... Yeah, they were, in the, they were actively in the church doing, it says they were worshiping the Lord, right? They were serving 
the Lord, ministering unto the Lord, then he revealed, separate me these two. Teenagers, don't put limits on God's will. Don't say, well, I want to do this. I like this. This specific area, this, this specific career will enable me to be able to live a happy life because it will enable me to have these set funds that I need. to. Don't, don't place limits on God's will. I don't know what God's will is for your life. But I will tell you this, don't say no. Listen, it's not, listen, it may not be God's will for you to be a pastor's wife or a pastor. But it could be that you could be the wife of a Sunday school teacher, of a deacon. You could be that Sunday school teacher or a deacon. Hello? Don't say no. Because I want to do, because you want to do this. Why don't you go talk to some folks who have said no in the past? We all have folks here that have said no in the past. And find out what their life was like when they said, after they said no. When they decided to get out of God's will and do something different. Ask them, what happened? Folks, don't say no. Don't put limits on God's will. Don't say no. Just do what Jesus is asking you to do. Follow him. And I guarantee you, you will not be disappointed. Yesterday, as I was walking through work, I was as getting as this coming up. I was, this is not what I had planned. This is not what I had planned. I had different plans than the Lord did. But I want to tell you this: my plans would not have led me to do what the Lord has, have, has me doing today. My plans would have gotten me in trouble. My plans would have led me to a life filled with chaos and uncertainty because I wanted to do that, something else. Folks, don't place limits on the Lord's specific plan for you. Say yes. Follow him. And I can guarantee you, you will not be disappointed. You can say, well, I don't care what you, what you have to say. That's fine and that's, that's fine. But look, at, look to the word of God and what it has to say. And the joy you will have in serving the Lord. Just look at Paul himself and what he went through and what he says about serving the Lord. Maybe this morning you have no idea God's plan for you because you're not saved. You've, you've never placed your faith, your trust in Jesus alone to save you. Maybe you're hoping that your good outweighs your bad. I had an acquaintance that I grew up with say this, I pray every day that he takes me to heaven. And I'm like, you're not reading your Bible. You don't have to pray that God, and God to take you to heaven. All you have to do is place your faith and your trust in Jesus, and you are going to heaven. Jesus himself says this. That if thou shalt confess with thy mouth, well, he says, John chapter 3, verse 16, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish, but have, present is have everlasting life. Jesus says, if you will place your faith and your trust in me, you have everlasting life. 
Your good won't get you there. Because all of your good are as filthy rags. They're not good enough. Because your sin has earned you eternal separation from God in hell. Your sin has earned you condemnation. But if you'll place your faith and your trust in Jesus, you'll have everlasting life. You will spend eternity in heaven with him. But that's a choice you have to make. Later in this chapter, you're going to see where Paul says this to a bunch of Jews. You're not worthy of everlasting life. Because they rejected Jesus. Could you imagine hearing that, that you are not worthy of everlasting life? Because you will not receive the free gift of salvation, of placing your faith and your trust in him, and have to spend eternity in hell because, well... I'm just going to do as Frank Sinatra said, do it my way. No, you can't do it your way. He made the rules. And if we want to ha- go to heaven, we must do it his way. And his way is through Jesus by faith. That's it. The question is this, will you? If you have not, and you're not sure... That heaven's your home when your heart quits beating. Will you do that today? In a moment where we're going to have what we call an invitation. It's a time that we set aside at the end of the service to deal with the Lord and what he has spoken to us about. And Brother Ronnie's going to have a song. He's getting it ready right now. He's going to, since Miss Ruth's not here, he's going to press play. And as soon as that music begins to play, the invitation is beginning. And if, listen. If you're not sure that you're on your way to heaven, I want to invite you to come forward and let me know. I want to show you from God's word, God's word, not my word, God's word, how you place your faith, your trust in him and what Jesus did on the cross. I'm going to take you directly to the Bible and show you what the Bible says. And when the music begins to play, if you need to change your priorities... From serving yourself to serving the Lord, we have an altar right here that you can get, that you can come to and get those priorities set right and see what the Lord has for you. But again, it's your choice, Father.